I'm a professional prop firm day trader, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use breaker blocks in my trading strategy. Breaker blocks are probably one of the most misunderstood strategies in the ICT concepts world, simply because people don't know when to use them. So in this video, I'm not only gonna show you what a breaker block is, I'm gonna show you how to use it and then give you live examples on a chart to show you how to enter a trade using a breaker block. Let's go ahead and get into it. What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna talk about breaker blocks. So the first thing we're gonna go over is what is a breaker block? Um, I hear a lot of people just call them failed order blocks. And um, you know, while I can see that logic, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth and make sure you understand what's actually occurring. That way you're better equipped to use them. Next, we're gonna go over how and when to use breaker blocks because there are a, there is a time and a place to use a breaker block. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, when do I use a fair value gap? When do I use a breaker block? So I wanna delve into that. Last but not least, everybody's favorite part, we're gonna talk about entries. How do we actually use a breaker block to trade? I want you to pay very close attention, make sure you put your phone to the side and watch all the way to the end of the video because we're gonna be going over some live chart examples and everything that we're gonna talk about is extremely important if you wanna use this correctly. So first and foremost, we need to know what a breaker block is. Breaker blocks are also called failed order blocks and they occur when the market shifts structure after taking liquidity into a reference point or a point of interest. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to the fact that we take liquidity into a reference point or a point of interest. So, for example, let's say we have a fair value gap, order block, you know, you name it, whatever it is, and the market comes down, we form a short term low, short term high, and the market takes this liquidity and immediately pushes back off. This is where we're going to be looking for breaker blocks. Now, if we don't have this order block or this fair value gap, you might see a breaker block work. But I'm all about trying to cultivate the highest probability circumstances to trade in. So I like using a confluence with the breaker block. You know, why was this breaker block created? Well, if the market is pushing in and rating liquidity into a point of interest, that is a time when you're looking for a likely reversal. So I want you to always look for, you know, some form of reference point or some form of, you know, it can be an old low on a higher time frame. It could be an order block. It can be, uh, it could even be a breaker block on a higher time frame from a time before. But whatever it is, you need to make sure that you're trading into an area where you're likely to see a reaction. So what happens in uh, this instance and what causes a breaker block to work is, let's say if there are people shorting market structure and they are shorting here and they've got their stop losses here and they may have a plan, they may not, they may be targeting something lower and they weren't expecting the market to reverse. So when the market reverses, they are either gonna be stopped out or they're gonna be underwater because a lot of retail traders, they're not, putting their stop loss in a sensible spot if they even have a stop loss. So when the market comes back down to this level, which is the breaker block, then that order is gonna be mitigated. So they're gonna mitigate their losses. They're gonna close out and potentially even enter new trades in the correct direction. So when we're looking at breaker blocks. We're looking at this last level right here. We're gonna go on a chart and show you exactly which candles to select, but we're looking at that high because once traders are underwater, you know, up in here, they're in the negative. Well, if the market comes down close to entry, they're gonna close. So let's say if they were in a short right here and they close it, that's gonna be viewed as the equivalent of a buy. Now with breakers, you have to be patient because after price is delivered with a ton of displacement, it's going to reprice lower. It's gonna come back down into that breaker block. So now that we understand what a breaker block is and the reason that price moves rapidly away from them, let's go over how to use it. So first and foremost, something that I can't stress enough is you wanna use breakers when the market is moving in harsh or consistent conditions, AKA when your bias is clear. Um, I cannot stress enough how much this helped me pick out the proper times to use breakers over other points of interest. So if the market is trending very heavily and you have a clear draw on liquidity, you're very confident in it, the market's bullish, and then price comes down and takes out a low and resumes its direction that you thought it was gonna go. So you have this little run on stops right here. So this level or this area right here is manipulation because we're in a bullish trend. If, we, we, if we're bullish, we're looking at each low being taken as a buying opportunity. Now, if you didn't get in down there and price came up displaced above this high and you have some form of failed order block here, right? once price travels back into that, since we are so confident and we are so close to our draw on liquidity and the market is trending in a very harsh condition, we're gonna look to enter in this breaker block and then price is going to move up into that draw on liquidity. So again, you wanna use breakers when the market is moving in harsh or consistent direction. So basically whenever you're very, very confident in your bias and the market is 
clearly moving towards the draw on liquidity. You don't want to use breakers every single time that they arise. You know, that's whenever we start to use fair value gaps or order blocks. But whenever we're using breakers, we want to make sure that the market is violently moving in the direction we are looking to trade with. Again, um, talked about this in the last uh, module, but you want to look for the breaker to occur before price reaches an old reference point. So we'll draw another example. Let's say that maybe there was a fair value gap right here, right? And that breaker pushes down and we raid liquidity. We take out that low. Again, we have a very clear draw on liquidity above. So the market's traded into a reference point. It's traded into a fair value gap. It moves out with displacement. So we now have a breaker block and this breaker block occurred when we formed a short-term high before a liquidity raid on sell side liquidity. Now, another thing, everything that I'm teaching you guys, if you want to invert it, you know, some people are going to ask what about, um, you know, a uh, bearish example, the same thing just inverted. So I hope that that helps. I don't want to go, you know, teach the same thing twice, but whenever the market comes back in this breaker, since we're in a harsh trending condition and we took stops, we took out liquidity into a reference point, this is whenever you're going to use a breaker. So what we're going to look for in the chart is the last up candle that forms a short term high. Now, this is the important part. It has to form that short term high before the sell side is taken. And this is a bullish example. So a bearish example, we have the last down candle. So for instance, if we're in a bearish example, since I haven't drawn any, let's say that market is moving and then the market comes up, we take liquidity into a fair value gap. So you've taken out the high right there, right? We're in a bearish trend overall and the market displaces down. So the short term low or the last down candle that formed this low is going to be your bearish breaker block. So that's where you'd look to trade from targeting more lows. You're not going to look for an order block up here in a harsh trending market. You know, you're just going to look at this as so let's say people who went long right here, whenever the market comes back up and they're not underwater anymore, they're going to close those buys, which is going to be the equivalent of a sell. And that's what you call mitigation. So in that example, we're looking for that last down candle that forms a short term low. So Notice that I'm emphasizing that it has to form that short term structure. And this is where a lot of people mess up with breakers. So I want you to pay very close attention when we get to the examples. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So again, after liquidity is taken, the market structure must shift with displacement. And then you're going to look for that last up or down candle that formed the short term structure. So liquidity has to be taken. We have to have a market structure shift. So again, we'll use another example. So the market's moving, we move up, we take out a low into, we'll say, an order box right here. And it can be an order block, a fair value gap, just any reference point. And then the market takes out that with displacement. If you haven't seen my market structure video, I encourage you to watch it because it's going to explain how I look at structure. So you need displacement. So let's say we've got that here. The market continued up and you have this level here. We're going to get into the trade and then we're going to look for our draw on liquidity. Let's talk about entries. How are we going to actually use a breaker block for entries? So what I want to do for this, um, I will put these here, these two methods. Uh, or take a screenshot or whatever, but I'm going to go in and show some live examples in the chart. We have the ES one hour chart, and we are looking at a bullish range. The market has made higher highs and higher lows. We are clearly drawing to the upside. So the market is in a bullish external structure. So it's normal to see price come down to a discount and clean out liquidity and trade into prep and trade into reference points. So this is totally normal to see this move down. The market is still trending up on an external level. So we look for price to come down and clean out this internal liquidity before moving to the upside. So as we approach areas of sell side liquidity with reference points resting below, we can look for breakers to potentially form. So as the market pushes through, we now have a potential breaker, but remember we need to see displacement to the upside. So we take out the sell side liquidity, we trade it into a reference point. But remember we have to have that displacement. So boom, now we have taken out the short term high with displacement that formed before the sell side liquidity. So this is very important. Notice how I'm not picking any of these levels here. We're noticing we came at a low, made a high, the market came down and took out that liquidity. So this is what we're paying attention to. So whenever we're looking at the last up candle that formed the short term high, we're going to look at this candle right here. And this is where people mess up breakers because they're going to want to draw just the last candle um, right before the down move. But they want to, but you want to pay attention and make sure you're marking the one that created the short term high. So the market came down, went up, and what's the last up candle before that short term high? Right there. So that is our breaker block. So once price trades through it with displacement, we then are going to use that as our reference point. Now as for entries, there are two types of entries we can do. Now I'll go back and show you guys what we've talked about before. So there's a direct entry on the breaker block where we use the breaker's full candle range for entry 
and we put our stop loss either under the breaker's low or high or under the high or low level of structure. And we're gonna target the recent liquidity pro trend. So in this example, if we wanted to use method one and just place a limit right on this level, you could either put a stop loss under the breaker. Now I recommend giving a little bit of give, you know, for ES, I like two ticks. That's what I just, I add that on all stop losses. Um, or you can use a swing low or the lowest low of this rate. I recommend for beginners, whenever you're, you know, you can trade on a demo, get used to it. But if uh, you're, you know, just watching this video and you've never traded it, I don't remember, I don't recommend trying to just put your stop there because it's easy to mess up, right? A lot of people will pick the wrong breaker. You know, you might pick this one and then you get stopped out and the trade runs without you. We're going to target pro trend liquidity because the, remember the market is extremely bullish. You know, even though we've repriced, it's totally normal. We came into a discount, took stops into a reference point. Now we have a displacement coming out, a breaker block. So you're going to target out this liquidity because remember price moves from internal liquidity to external liquidity. So you've got relatively equal highs here. This is how you would target it in that way. So let's see how this trade played out. Trade was active right there. Pretty high RR trade. Don't expect this every single time. Market moves up straight to liquidity. And this is whenever we know the market is in a clear trend, right? We get movements like this. We use breakers like this whenever we have a very clear range and our clear draw on liquidity, which is these equal highs. And the reason this is the draw, and if you guys haven't, I recommend that you watch my video on daily bias. But if we're looking at this, you know, the market's in an external range, right? We've gotten displacement over here. We've formed liquidity. So we're going to be drawing to that liquidity. That's the expectational order flow. And we're going to continuously make higher highs until we have a reason not to. And the second way, you could have just put stops under here. Would have still been a great trade, but lower risk to reward, which is fine, especially if you're a beginner. Now, for the next method, you would have waited until price tapped into this level, and then you would have watched the lower time frames for a confirmation. So if we're using a one hour, which is the chart we're using here, I recommend hopping to a five minute. And as price tapped into it, you can use two ways, and confirmation entries are different for everybody. You could have waited for a clear break of structure with displacement and just marketed. That's what I usually do. Um, some people will always wait for a, uh, you know, maybe a retracement down to a fair value gap. Now, if you did that, you've got it up here. So again, you can wait for a close with confirming the displacement break of structure because again, we're just waiting for price to tap into this reference point, give us a clear break of structure with displacement. And that to me is the confirmation. Now, if you want to wait and try to, you know, let price return to a fair value gap, that's fine. I know that's most people's strategy. Um, mine's a little different. That's just how I trade. So same targeting method right here. You would have targeted the, the same level because again, the trade's the same trade. We're not gonna target differently based on our entry. You know, the narrative is the narrative. Um, you know, the second way you could have done it was wait for a fair value gap to get tapped into right here. So you wait for the first fair value gap to get tapped into, it gets tapped into right there. Now you can also get a little bit better risk to reward if you're very confident in your analysis, you can put stop loss under the fair value gap. But in my experience, that results in a lot of um, you know, getting wicked out. And that's normal. I mean, if you have a higher risk to reward on average, you can afford that, but it's not really my style. So you could have done that or put stop losses down here, which would have obviously given you a little bit um, worse of a risk to reward. Now, something else that I wanna point out to you guys, and this is kind of a, a, a hack so to speak, with, with breakers. Whenever we have a breaker block with a fair value gap nested inside of it, that becomes 10x the confluence that that level will be respected. So if we're looking at this breaker and then you see another fair value gap inside of it, we notice the reaction here. But that is one of my favorite, favorite entries of all time is that breaker block combined with a fair value gap. So you see how all sorts of different things are coming together. We have our bias, which is clear. The market is trending up. We are looking for equal highs. So we're just wondering how to get there. So we expect price to reprice into a discount and take out liquidity on the internal level. So it can then expand to the external liquidity. That's exactly what happens. But again, we wanna make sure we focus whenever we're trying to use breakers, you have to use that last up candle before the short-term high is formed. We're not gonna use the last up candle before stops are taken. It's the last up candle before the short-term highs. Can't stress that enough. For extra confluence, you can look for a fair value gap. And for those of you who are asking or going to ask for a different example, this is what it would look like from a bearish example. Again, it'd be that last down candle before the short-term low was formed. And I know the colors may mess you guys, but hopefully you can understand. Um, and this would be buy side liquidity. Now, something else to note is that you can take partials along the way. Um, you know, especially if you're a beginner, I recommend, you know, looking for liquidity, looking for fair value gaps, because again, if your bias is wrong, 
you know, the trade may not work out or it may work out for a short amount of time and then turn around on you. And, you know, no matter how good of a trader you are, partials are good because we're not going to be right all the time. So you could have taken um, partials at this fair value gap. And again, you can use just premium and discount of the leg down. So you could take some partials at equilibrium and really just look at look at the chart and say, you know, what areas could this possibly have problems at? Maybe it's this order block over here. Maybe it's going to be this fair value gap. Maybe it's going to be as soon as price gets to a premium. Um, but you, you always want to be taking partials um, to cushion the blow if you are only half right. Because it really sucks to see a trade run, you know, multiple uh, R and you could have made some money, but you just didn't take any partials. So always take some partials. Um, every trade is going to be different for that. But again, I just recommend using premium and discount of the leg that gave you the trade. Right? So that's it for breaker blocks. If you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments. Also, if you have any video suggestions, let me know. I'm going to be releasing videos every Monday and every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. So make sure to stay tuned. And if you didn't already, go ahead and like, follow, or like, subscribe, and comment. Yeah, I'm getting better at this YouTube thing, guys, I promise. Um, I appreciate you guys as always. And until the next one, I will see you later. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you want access to the private Discord, use code CASPER, all caps, to start your free trial. That's where I provide my trade signals, teach my private classes, and you have access to one of the best trading communities out there. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my content. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to hit me up on any of my social medias. They are all down in the description with the link to Playbit. Have a great day. And remember, if you can't see the liquidity, then you are the liquidity.